It's been over a year since I published the first review of this Lance travel trailer behind me. That video became one of the most viewed Lance reviews on YouTube. Since that time, we've taken several more trips with the trailer, we've had a baby, we've changed tow vehicles once or twice, and a few issues have cropped up with the trailer. So what I want to do today is walk you through all those changes, tell you about kind of what's gone wrong with the trailer, though they're small things, but I'll show you what they are. We'll talk about how my different tow vehicles have done towing it. We'll talk about also sort of what I perceive as the value of the Lance trailer compared to other recent trailers that have come out and some other brands have become more competitive. And we'll talk about would we buy this model again and would we buy a Lance trailer again. So stay tuned and let's jump into the review. First, why don't we take a minute and go back and review some of the reasons why we chose to buy a Lance trailer over other models. So there's a few big decision factors that helped us make this purchase. So we wanted something that was really high quality and that would stand the test of time. We had owned a few other travel trailers before, different brands, Forest River and things like that. And while they were okay, the quality just seemed um, pretty questionable. And if you've owned a travel trailer, you know, you know this, things kind of fall apart and they just don't seem to be made as well as they could be. So we liked the Lance quality, their reputation for durability, and we wanted something that would hold its value. We also wanted something that would be a short trailer. So this trailer is about 21 feet. We have a steep mountain driveway here, living up here where we do. And so it's important for us to not have a trailer over about 21, 22 feet. So this fits that bill. The other thing about that is that there are not many travel trailers of this size range that have a dual axle. A dual axle was incredibly important to us and here's why. There, there's a few things about the dual axle. So towing stability. When you tow with a single axle trailer, the trailer just does this all day. I don't care what kind of hitch you have, what kind of tow vehicle you have, a single axle just doesn't tow very well. And if you've, if you've towed single axle and dual axles, you know what I'm talking about. They, they move around. Also, when they go over bumps, a single axle bounces constantly. A dual axle, because every bump hits both axles, it can absorb bumps in the road, potholes much, much better. The other thing about a dual axle trailer is that if you have a flat tire on one tire, you're not totally in an emergency disaster situation. If you have a single axle trailer and you have a blowout on one side, um, you have a real big problem to deal with. And that's just something we don't, we don't want to worry about. The other thing we like about the Lance trailer, especially these, these ones around this 20 foot size range, is they have a lot of storage for their size. They have big water tanks, they have a lot of exterior storage with the front slide through, they have a lot of interior storage, uh, especially for the size, and they're just, they, they make use of every square inch of space within the body of the trailer, and that's something that we really, really appreciate. Even if you look at the front, there's a lockable dual battery compartment, there's three propane tanks, so anyway, you get the point. They, they cram a lot of content into a small unit. Hi everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Outdoors. This is a new spin-off of my old channel, Big Rock Media, which has now become Big Rock Moto and is dedicated just to motorcycle content. So in this channel, you'll find content on Jeeps, travel trailers, outdoor sports, mountain biking, car and truck reviews, and so much more. If you want to support the creation of more content like this, there's a few easy things you can do. You can subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can leave a thumbs up on all the videos. You can leave a comment on all the videos. And you can also consider being a Patreon supporter to gain access to behind the scenes footage, tips and tricks, rants and raves, and so much more. If you're looking for my motorcycle content, that's my other channel, Big Rock Moto. I'll link to that here in the card and also down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your support. And now back to your video. Sorry, I had to move back here behind the trailer. It's just so hot right now. The whole West Coast is just under a relentless heat wave and I'm just burning up sitting out there in the front. So anyway, let's keep going with the review. So uh, another thing I wanna talk about, the price. The price is a problem for people with these Lance trailers and, and I get it, I really do. Um, this trailer, when we bought it, uh, I think it's stickered around 36. I think we paid 32. Of course, things have changed nowadays with COVID and supply issues and everybody trying to buy RVs which is a whole nother video I think that we should talk about. Uh, nowadays for this trailer, I think it's in the high 30s, maybe even 40,000, which is getting really, really steep, honestly, if, if you think about it for, for a small trailer like this. That's just, it's a lot of money. Now, what I will say about the price is that the resale value is incredible. Right now, this trailer is probably worth 32, 33, and we only paid like, that's about what we paid for it um, two and a half years ago. So that's pretty amazing, but that's just because of what's happened in the RV market. But my point is that resale value is very good on a Lance unit 
whether it's a truck camper or a trailer, because people know their reputation for quality and long lasting durability. So that's a big factor. So you're not really spending the whole 30 or 40 grand. You're, you know, you're paying for depreciation, insurance, registration, running costs. But if you look at what you can sell it for later, actually your cost of ownership wasn't quite as bad as it sounds, if you can afford that price of entry. Okay, so let's quickly run through how this trailer tows and what we've towed it with, because that's kind of changed over the years. So before I had this trailer, I had an RPOD 178, and there's a review on my channel. One of the first videos I did, which was a terrible cell phone video, it was way before I ever intended to actually have an actual YouTube channel. But anyway, that video is out there. You can still go watch it. I had that, and I towed it with a Chevy Colorado with the V6. And I kind of said, well, you know, I wish it was a little bit more power, but it did the job. And then I upgraded to an F-150 with the 5 liter V8. It was a 2015, I believe. So it had the six speed transmission. And we towed that, we towed the R-Pod with that for a little while. And then we ended up buying a Lance and towing the Lance with that F-150 and it did fine. The problem was when we would go out to Colorado and go over Vail Pass and things like that. And we did that multiple times. I had 35 inch tires that I put on the F-150 and the gearing just wasn't there. And I said, well, I'm either gonna have to change the gearing or do something drastic. We ended up buying a F-150 with the 3.5 liter EcoBoost engine. That was a great truck, um, really miss it. Um, the EcoBoost engines have their own issues and I have videos on that you can go watch, which have become very, very controversial. But anyway, uh, the EcoBoost towed it amazing, you know, had the 10 speed in that truck and it just never had any issue. This trailer is around 5,500 pounds gross vehicle weight rating. And I figure on most of our trips, we're probably between 5,000 and 5,500 pounds with all of our stuff in it. And if we're carrying water, that's, that's a big uh, difference there. So about six months ago, I decided that I wanted to shift my hobbies more towards off-roading and Jeeps and overlanding. And so I kind of fell in love with the new Jeep Gladiator that had come out. So I looked at all the numbers. I said, well, the Gladiator is going to be able to tow it. It's not going to be great. It's not going to be towing at 80 miles an hour, getting 12 miles a gallon, like, like almost the 3.5 liter F-150 did. But I figured, okay, it'll work. So I bought the Gladiator and I love it for off-roading and Jeep stuff. Um, and it's a great vehicle, but it doesn't tow that well. It tows just okay. And I have a video about towing with the Gladiator, which I'll link here. I think that's still on my other channel. Uh, but anyway, the, yeah, the Gladiator tows it okay, but it's not great. I think around 60 miles an hour is where it's comfortable. If you hit steep mountain grades, you know, the engine is revving way up there, but the Pentastar V6 does the job and it does okay. Again, you have to use a weight distribution hitch. You have to have a brake controller set up really well. So you need to have your stuff in order. Um, and I always say you can tow up to 70 or 80% of your vehicle's rated tow capacity. Just keeping in mind your, your payload is gonna be an issue. Uh, and you know, again, just look, just look at all your numbers. I have some videos with spreadsheets that uh, people use, so I'll link those here as well. All right, so this is what happens when your camera overheats and you have to reshoot all your footage. So now it's like six hours later and I'm in front of the trailer. So anyway, the next part I wanted to get into was what issues have we experienced with the trailer over these past couple years as an update to my original review. So there's been a few little things that have gone wrong. So let me go back to the beginning and start because I don't think I talked about this in my other video. So on our second trip out with the Lance, actually I was by myself, I remember this now, I was dirt biking with my friends up in Death Valley. I had the camper at Furnace Creek, which is mostly a dry camping area. So I was using the generator and I was using the hot water heater on propane. Well, the hot water heater stopped working. Uh, it, it failed like, I think on the first day of my trip. So I had to go that whole trip without hot water. Uh, it turns out what happened was there's a known issue with the Dometic water heaters in these models that the circuit board is faulty and basically it doesn't let the electrical signal turn on the igniter so you just have no ignition to your water heater so i got home and i figured well i could waste my time going to the dealer which is a long ways for me up and down the mountain and everything like that or i could just probably fix it myself so i found out that there's an aftermarket replacement from a company called dinosaur electronics and i was able to buy that i think it was 80 bucks it arrived here in a couple days i think i even bought it on amazon you know how the world is now and I was able to pop it in and that fixed my issue, no problem since then. So I do have to point out as I go into these things that you know, just because Lance is really good quality, doesn't mean they're not gonna suffer from issues with the components because if you know about travel trailers, you know how they're made. 
a company like Lance or Forest River or whoever it is has to go out and source all these components from these different companies. They have to get toilets, microwaves, fridges, uh, plumbing systems, heating systems, you know, TVs, and all those things are subject to any issues that those factories might have, that those companies might have. Uh, so while Lance may know how to screw together a trailer, if they get a bad component, that's going to affect their reputation as a brand when those things go out. So what else has gone wrong with the trailer? Well, there's some, been some small things. The trim around the windows has come loose on a lot of the windows, but that's typical that you kind of see on any travel trailer. They just use like screws that go into the sides of the trailer. And I guess they just, over the vibration of the road, they just eventually end up pulling out. Also the cover over the stove, the glass cover that folds up and folds out over the stove, the fasteners on that were like um, plastic, I think, because they didn't, you know, it was going into glass. So that makes sense, but they all broke. Uh, and the stove cover came loose while traveling. So I ended up using some actual, uh, actual regular bolts, but I used nylon um, washers and I used uh, nylon nuts so that they wouldn't come loose. So that's been fine since I fixed that. One issue that we did experience with the trailer, we were camping uh, outside of Page, Arizona in the middle of winter, and it was a very cold spell. They had snowstorms and ice. It was like 15, 20 degrees during the night. And so we were running the propane furnace to keep everything you know, from, from freezing, right? And you buy a Lance trailer because you want that four season capability and you hope it's gonna be able to work in those sub-freezing temperatures. But the problem that we ran into, and I guess this isn't necessarily Lance's problem, but the propane regulator was getting condensation and when it got cold enough, it was freezing up and it was stopping the propane flow going into the trailer. So we would lose our furnace, our heating in the middle of the night and I'd have to go out there during the blizzard and try to warm up the regulator, thaw it out and get the propane flowing so I could keep the trailer and the plumbing from freezing. So that was kind of a pain. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any long-term solution for that. I've heard of a lot of owners like who, have, who camp in really cold areas like putting a little light bulb in there overnight. I guess that'd work if you had hookups and you could run that just to keep the regulator from getting too cold and freezing up. So not sure what can be done about that, but if you do know, let me know down in the comments. So we have experienced one flat tire. Again, that's not Lance's fault. They're Goodyear Endurance tires, which are some really, really good trailer tires if you do your research. So we ended up, uh, actually we got the flat tire. It was a screw, big screw to the tire right as we were pulling into a campsite. And so I heard it, I heard the noise coming out. I was able to jack it up at the campsite, um, fix it, replace it. Um, I put the, actually I put the spare on and then when we got home from that trip I replaced the spare tire with a equivalent Goodyear Endurance tire just sticking to those good Goodyear tires. So that was something, uh, keep in mind that you want to check your jacks and your tools and your spares just to make sure that you know how to change a flat, that you have the necessary jack to lift up the trailer, any shims that you might need for the jack, um, and also check the air pressure on your spare tire now and then is a really good idea. The most recent issue that we've had with the Lance is that the refrigerator stopped working. So we were driving back from Arizona. I think we were out in Catalina State Park outside of uh, Tucson. We were driving all the way back to Southern California and it was hot. It was like April or May, but there was a heat wave. So it was like 95 degrees. We're going through the desert. We had the fridge running, which we do when we travel. I know some people debate about whether that's safe, but we always run the propane fridge when we're traveling. And it stopped working, you know, part of the way home. And so our food started to get warm. Uh, Come to find out later when I got home, I did some research. I, I was really disappointed. I was like, man, this could be a really expensive repair if the fridge has gone out. But what they have is there's something called a thermal fuse. It's not a fuse like an automotive blade style fuse like you might be familiar with, which would be easy to replace um, and easy to know because you can see through that clear material whether it's blown. But this is an actual thermal fuse. It looks like a resistor. Basically what it does, if something gets too hot, if the, if the temperature inside that, that control box gets too hot, then the thermal fuse blows to protect the circuitry, the equipment. So that had gone out. Um, I guess they fail sometimes. That's something that happens with these. And I was able to buy a box of them for five or 10 bucks on Amazon. So I have like six spares or 10 spares. I don't know, whatever. I was able to replace it really easily just by splicing into the wiring. And it cost me a few bucks and a few minutes of my time. Uh, and I was done. Of course, diagnosing that problem did take a little bit longer but I'm a DIY person, that was something that I was able to do. Again, I didn't want to take it into the dealership, wait weeks for them to look it in and mess with it and then charge me hundreds of dollars for like a $1 part. So I was able to fix that myself. So I want to talk about a few of the changes we've made to the trailer. We haven't modified the trailer very much, but let's run through a few things. So we did change out the shower head. Uh, in the RV world, it's very common, the stock shower heads that come in RVs, motorhomes, travel trailers are these junky things that don't give you much water pressure. So you're able to put on something called an oxygenic shower head. It basically just gives you more uh, pressure coming out of the shower head to give you a better shower using less water. So that was a great modification, cost, I don't know, something like 50 bucks to put that on. 
uh, did that very early on. Another thing we did, which I'm going to have a whole separate video about how to install them and how they work because I've had so many questions about it, is the camera on the back. So whether you want to call it a backup camera, a reverse camera, whatever, I actually run it all the time. So I wired the camera into the running lights of the trailer so that any time I, if I wanted to activate the camera and I have a monitor on the dash of my truck that I put on the windshield with a suction cup, um, I'm able to turn it on just by turning on the running lights. So I like that. I run it anytime I'm driving. So whenever I'm driving down the road, I can see behind me, I can see the blind spots, it's very, very nice. And of course, when you're pulling into a campsite or when you're backing into your driveway, whatever, you can easily see what's behind you and it might save you your marriage from having those yelling matches back and forth, left, right, this way, that way, trying to back into a spot. You all know how that can go. So I definitely recommend you know, spending 100, 200 bucks. They're pretty easy to install yourself. And again, I'm gonna be doing a video about this, so subscribe if you wanna see that video. I have a few different ones to show you. Some companies have sent me some to test. Uh, I'm still using the one that I've had for a number of years. It's a company called U-Way. It's, it was an Amazon product, you know, there's a lot of ones out there. But it attaches to the back of the trailer. I bolted it on actually, wired it into the running lights, and then it sends a wireless signal up to a monitor in the cab. So, Highly recommend that. And in the future, I might consider on, if we have other trailers or motorhomes in the future, actually putting cameras not just on the back, but also on the sides, um, just to see on the sides of the trailer might be nice too. So what about powering up the trailer when we're boondocking? So I mentioned the Lance, the nice thing is that you get the big water tanks, which is great for dry camping. But what do you do about power? Well, we have not gone the way of putting an inverter in and putting, spending a bunch of money on lithium batteries and all that. We decided that wasn't a very good return on our investment. So what we do, if we wanna run the AC or run the microwave or just uh, power up our batteries, um, there's a couple things we have. We have a 2000 watt Yamaha inverter generator, which works really well. Back when I bought it, they didn't have the cheaper Costco alternatives with the Yamaha motors in them. Um, so I had to pay a bit more back then when I, I've had my Yamaha for a while. I think I had it with my previous trailers. The thing I would say about the generator is get one, get like a 3000 or 3500 watt generator, even though it's a little heavier, because then you can easily run the air conditioner in your trailer. I have the small air conditioner on this Lance. I think it's a 10,000 BTU, uh, maybe even smaller than that. And the 2000 watt will barely start it. It will run it, but it has a hard time starting it, especially at higher elevation. So, you know, get a big enough generator, make sure you research that. I'm doing a video on generators very soon. So say, stay tuned for that. In terms of just trickle charging the batteries, keeping them charged up, I do, I used to use the Harbor Freight solar panels, which was the four big panels that you put out. I did videos on that, a lot of comments on those videos. What I ended up going to later, and I use now, is a folding solar panel setup. So it folds up real small, lightweight and compact. It unfolds out and it gives me 100 watts. Well, it's a 100 watt panel, but you only get about 60, 70 watts because that's how solar works. Uh, I run that through a charge controller and that helps keep things topped up. But again, of course, it's not gonna give you enough power to run ACs and microwaves and things like that. Talking about power for a second, um, I did have dual batteries, dual 12 volt batteries in the trailer for a while. I had one battery starting to go bad, so I pulled it out and I just have a single 12 volt battery. Um, I probably do recommend having at least two batteries because you know if you don't have a lot of charging, if you're boondocking, if you don't have a lot of solar uh, panels or you're just using electricity like running your furnace at night if it's colder, you're gonna run down that single battery pretty quickly. So it's a good idea to have two batteries. And if I could do it again, I'd go with dual six volt batteries instead of dual 12 volt. You get more capacity with a dual six volt setup. If you wanna know more about that, there's a ton of videos out there on YouTube and articles about batteries. So the question is, would we buy the Lance trailer again? And my answer is yes, although I wouldn't buy this exact model. So let me cover that. So this is the 1685. It has the front bed that's sideways across the trailer. So what it means is that uh, when you sleep with your partner, with your family, whatever it is, you have to crawl over that person if you're the one sleeping in the front. And that becomes an issue for middle of the night bathroom trips to get up to have a snack, deal with your baby or whatever it might be, your pets. Um, I would not get another trailer that had the crawl over bed. Now I should have known better when we bought it because I'd had to crawl over beds before. But in my mind, I was thinking, well, I want a Lance trailer, but I want the shortest one I can get, the lightest one I can get that still had dual axles. So I said, well, we'll get the 1685 because um, it met those requirements, but it did have the crawl over bed. But looking back, I would much rather have gotten the 1995 or the 1985 that are very similar to this in the floor plan and the weight and the size and maybe a foot or two longer, which is fine. 
uh, but they do have the walk around front bed. So I think that's a huge thing. So make sure any trailer you're gonna buy, really think about how your family's gonna use it, how it's gonna work for you and spend plenty of time in it at the dealership. Now I will say that there is more competition for the lands than I think there used to be. I think some of the other manufacturers like Forest River and others have upped their game. The R-Pods have gotten more high end. They even have a dual axle R-Pod now, which was always a complaint of mine on the R-Pod because like I mentioned before, I hate single axle trailers. The Geo Pros are pretty nice, but the, the problem is they're still a single axle only. Uh, I've looked at the Mini Light trailers. I think that's also a Forest River product. Grand Design has some really nice units that people seem to be very happy with. So. The value proposition is a tough one. I, I, you know, Lance's quality is great. There's no denying that. And I think that's gonna hold up and the resale values are good. But compared to what you get for the money compared to some of the other brands, I think it's becoming a bit of a tough proposition there, especially with some of the pricing increases that we've seen with the Lance trailers. Of course, we're kind of seeing that across the RV industry because of increased demand and reduced supply. So in summary, we've had great memories with this trailer. We've loved the trailer and it's provided you know so many great experiences for uh, my wife and i and for now having our daughter sierra too it's been it's been great so in conclusion about the lance trailer we've had a great experience with it the issues we've had relative to issues that people have with their other trailers and rvs have been relatively minor in my opinion and have mostly been able to fix here in the driveway for pretty cheap so i've been happy with that I love how it tows, I like how it looks, I like how it works, I like the quality. The dual axle is great, especially for such a small trail to have a dual axle. Uh, the storage is great. I really don't have any regrets about it, except like I mentioned, I would get that walk around front bed. So this is the point in the video where I ask you what you think. Have you looked at the Lances compared to other trailers? What do you think? Are they worth the extra money or would you go with something else for this price point? Let me know down in the comments below and let's have a discussion about it. Thanks again for watching. Again, if you have questions about the Lance trailers, about our experience with it, let me know down below. I read and respond to every comment on my channel. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for your support. Happy camping, and we'll see you out there.